coming up in all angles. How are schools being affected by COVID-19? We'll hear from teachers. For every teacher that I've spoken to, the, the most students they've had on the groups is like seven out of, say, a minimum of 25. Teacher representatives, parents, and the Caribbean Examinations Council. We are even concerned about students who might be a part of families who have been exposed to the COVID and perhaps even lost loved ones. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of All Angles and a very special welcome to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. I'm Dion Jacks Millo. First up, we talk to teachers about the impact of COVID-19 on their teaching. First, we have with us from Waitabit Primary School in Trelawney, Charlene Lynch. From Devon Primary in Manchester, we have Chevelle Scott Johnson and Glenroy Williams teaches at St. Andrew Technical High School in St. Andrew. And thanks so much to our teachers for joining us in this segment of the program. Thank you all so much. Let, me, let me start off by asking what's been happening since schools were closed until now. Ms. Scott Johnson, let me ask you first of all, has there been any teaching going on at school for you? Yes, most definitely. We use different um, platforms to bring across our lessons to our students. Before the lockdown too, we had an action plan that would speak to how we would operate in the event that you know we would be out of school. And it has come in handy now, and there is strong accountability as we have to teach and we submit our daily reports to our principal, um, which, is all, which is submitted to the Ministry of Education on a daily basis. So, we have been teaching, we have been planning our lessons, and we are doing it strategically, especially for grade six. You know, we have our pep examinations that we have to prepare the students for. So we look for activities that are in line with the objectives in the curriculum, and we try to get them to all students. What are the platforms you've been using? Well, we use WhatsApp, we use Edifocal. You know, a lot of times they have live sessions, and. We have gone ahead and personally registered the students because sometimes most of the students they're using data plan so for me i have wi-fi so i would go ahead and other teachers too who who have access to wi-fi we would personally register those students and just provide them with their username and password so they are able to log in and to do various tasks from you know all the different subject areas and we use where well, there's this website that i recently found up found out it's called liveworksheets.com where the students are able to actually do the worksheets on their smartphones or using their laptop and that takes away from you know the everyday writing so we try to find new strategies as we go along and new new ways to get the students engaged and to make sure that they're learning as on on the liveworksheets.com they are able to see their incorrect answers so you know they get an immediate feedback as to where they went wrong and they may reattempt it to get the job done effectively. What are you finding in terms of percentage participation of your class? Well, I have 30 students in grade six and I reach them some online. I have about 19 or 20 students in my WhatsApp group. And so we disseminate information through that group. But for those that we're not able to reach, we provide, we send worksheet to the school and we have different drop off and pick up areas where these students, you know, can go to pick up their worksheet. So we have reached all our students. All right. Let me come to Miss Lynch now and ask you for your experience. What's it been? Good afternoon. Well, I was listening to Mrs. Johnson and I'm impressed. OK, so I teach at, is it OK to say what school? Absolutely. Wait a bit primary. That's in Upper Trelawney, South Trelawney. And our experience is not the same. Um, we have tried and we are trying. But so far, for every teacher that I've spoken to, the, the most students they've had on the groups is like seven out of, say, a minimum of 25. This is because it's um, most of them, I can say, we're, we're a farming community, as you might yes. know. And most of them they do not have access to the data not only that 
for the parents who have the smartphones, when we are able to reach the students, the parents are gone with the phone. They're not home. So I wouldn't call what we've been doing teaching per se. We have been sending the work out and those who come online, they get to, we get feedback from them and we try our best to reach as many of them as possible. But so far it has not been what I would call a success because of um, the limited um, access to the internet and smartphones and where the locations of the students, they're, they're um, different areas and some of these areas there is definitely no access to Wi-Fi and the data is very expensive that's what they will tell you so what? for any one week we don't have the same five or ten students online one they might come on today and tomorrow another seven and the next day another so it's it's almost impossible to really teach something new to these students what about physical worksheets? Because we had heard the minister saying physical material would be sent out to drop off points for, for children to pick up. Has that been working? Yes. Um, for the most part, when we do, when we, when we got the, the worksheets or we prepare some and we ask the students, the parents to pick them up at a point, that's when some, more, more than what we get online, would turn up for those. But, but even then, they do not return them. And for some, I, I know that we have problems. Sometimes we get them back via WhatsApp. They, they snap it and send it to us. But sometimes we can't read it for whatever reason. So are there any... Well, let me bring in Mr. Williams. I'll, I'll come back to that. Mr. Williams, now you're a math teacher. Um, for you, what's been the experience? Well, for me, good evening, viewers. For me, the experience has been on and half at first. When we just have the lockdown of school, that was when the week before I created a WhatsApp group with my CXC students. And as such, the SBA was supposed to be completed, which was not completed. So I used in WhatsApp to get it complete. Thereabout, I found out about Ed Muda and I directed everyone in the class Ed Muda. There are combined classes, 42 students, and Ongo 17 did log on. And well, that's, an, that's an online educational an, platform. Yes, it's a platform where worksheet videos will be uploaded for them to go on at a specific time and work with me. So they will meet me there at a specific time for the week. Sometimes I'm there and one or two persons are there. Out of how many? But a class of how many? A class is two class combined and it's 42 students. Exactly so true. I will have 10 for the most that is online. But the beauty about um, Edmudo is that I can leave the work there and whenever they get access to internet or Wi-Fi, they are able to do the work and upload. But still recognizing that some of our students, although they have a smartphone or they do a lot of things on social media, they do not understand fully how to upload their work. Yeah, they would have completed their work and they don't know how to upload it so that I can see the market and comment. So what does that mean for, for instance, you mentioned the SBAs that hadn't been finished? Well, the SBAs has not been finished. I maybe have about five to seven per, um, students who have not submitted anything yet. I have contacted their parents, I've got parents involved, and I'm still waiting. I would see an SBA comes to me and I would say value eight out of 20, and as such, submitting something like that, they will fail. And still giving them chance, and days pass, I don't hear anything from the child, I don't hear anything from the parents. So I would have to now be calling phones until they do answer. Send text message, send WhatsApp and send them to wait on the SBA. Is this different though from what you would have had say last year or year before? This is this is indeed different because this is the second year since we're doing SBA for months. But the SBA is not so much the challenge with the technology and the access because we, I'm aware that some of my students might have lost their phone or their parents have lost their phones, so numbers have changed. 
I've gone to school, looked for student file, and made contact with all the numbers on the file until I was able to contact someone who could have linked me to the student so that the SBA could have started. I spoke with my HOD today, and I let her know that I still have maybe about five students. There's nothing coming. I check my email every day, and I don't see an SBA. I have even gone as far as to sign them up on the Edmodo where once they go into their email, they see the invitation, they click on it, they will see at least five worksheets there to be done, and the worksheets are all six months for charge papers. Do you think at least part of that is data access? Yes, I figure that part of it is data access, because I've asked those who have issues that they would have contacted me outside of the group and I would have guided them with the issue that they have. So I'm aware that data access is one of the issues. If you, if it were entirely up to you, what would you do in terms of the exam date? Well, if it's up to me, I would rather push the exam back to a date in which I know if school is, up, is gonna open the end of May, I would like, teachers to have at least three weeks fully with those students because there's a lot of damage control to do. There's a lot of catching up to do because I'm still very much concerned for some of the students who are the ones who work well in the present of the teacher outside of those who will just go online and look at videos and look at worksheet and follow, read and understand. In the present of the teacher, some students work better. Yes, Miss Lynch, I saw you nodding there. Ag agreeing with Mr. Williams, that in the presence of the teacher, the students, some students work better, most for my case. As I said, with wait a bit, I definitely realize that it's a data issue because especially grade six, they are quite interested. I, I can tell you that. But when you finally get to them and they say, Miss, mommy never have no money to buy the plan. Miss, I didn't get to go because the phone was not here or something Saturday like it's definitely Monday, um, they approve shopping. So right. do you find though that um, it makes a difference? Some children, in other words, have parents who can more effectively help them and supervise them than others. Does that make a difference? Yes. It I does. Will, it does. Yes, definitely. I hear everybody coming in, so let me let Miss Lynch and then I'll come to the others. Definitely. The, the, um, some parents um, put out that extra effort more than others. Yes. And, and it is obvious. It's not only during the COVID period, though. Um, what we're finding, too, um, Ms., Mrs. Miller, is that the same set of students who were always there with you, interested, the same parents, are the same ones now who are actually really trying to make that extra effort to That's get true. the data by whatever means. So yes, parents' input have a lot to do with this. Mrs. Scott Johnson? Yes, I do concur with Mrs. Lynch. Parents, as she said, it's the same parents often times who you know are always there. I see other parents putting out effort now because, you know, this is, we don't have a choice and the parent-teacher interaction has increased, which is good. Yes. Um, we send in the work. Some of the students are using their parents' phones so they, you know, see what the students are doing and they try to play a part. But where the challenge will come in is sometimes, you know, even though we send YouTube videos and we, I personally would like upload videos with myself explaining certain concepts, Sometimes the parents who are there guiding them, they really don't understand how to, you know, how they don't really understand what the, ch what the children are doing. So there is a challenge there, but I do think that the parents' input has a very good effect on the results that these students produce. Okay, so Mr. Williams? Yes. I for for CSEC students, perhaps, I don't know, the parents aren't, aren't as important or is that not true? The parents are very, very important all the way. And one of the issues we are having at the high school is that the parents forget about the children at high school and believe that they are able to manage on their own. Because um, last month, I called two parents and I was saying, I still have not seen SB from your child. 
working with boys coming from an inner city community is very very difficult because one of my classes all boys and they are coming from inner city various background and the violence so i know the challenge from great and working with them and know what it will take to push them and to get them to believe that they can pass this exam now i know i call two parents and the two parents they sit with their son and they call me every step of the way sir my son said he has sent you this is it so and i would check my email and i would have screenshot or whatever comment i sent to the child i make sure that the parents see it also and as such those two parents stand by their child until the sba was complete and those students did well on the sba because of the parent input now i added the parents to the same whatsapp group for the child and said to the parents these two parents did this and i'm calling on the other parents to step up and assist and that's where i've seen some parents get on board and working with me and the child because yes they might not be able to understand maths at the CSEC on level but understanding why the child needs to do it and that the teacher is there guiding and their input and work with the teacher is actually helping sad to say i still have like a three parents who has not done anything more than just call me and say sir the child said it's an sb and i said i've not received an sb mrs scott johnson what about you would you say that you think the the, the teaching is proceeding to the point that the students would be ready to advance as they would in a normal year well, I think that it would be good to reinforce certain concepts, though we, we try to teach new concepts. But as I said, I think it makes a big difference when the teacher is physically interacting with the students. Some will manage because, you know, we have students of varied abilities. Some will manage, but some will definitely need some form of reinforcement and preparation for their upcoming examinations. All right. I'm going to leave it there. Can I thank you all so very much? We lost Miss Lynch there at the last minute. I think perhaps some of the internet issues she was speaking to us about. Um, but thank you both so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye You're welcome, and thanks for having us.